Hi everyone. Today let us discuss literary terms part two. First one, epigram. An epigram is any short catchy phrase or saying. The word epigram is derived from the Greek word epigramma, which means to write upon or to inscribe. Epigrams often include a twist at the end, which adds humor or irony to the statement or turns it into satire. For example, the quote from Albert Einstein is a well-known epigram. The difference between genius and stupidity is that genius has its limits. And the epigram is brief, clever and a little snarky. Epigrams can also convey more serious ideas. For example, politicians often use epigrams in their speeches to leave a lasting impression on their audience. The following epigram is spoken by John F. Kennedy. Uh, uh, mankind must put an end to war or war put an end to mankind. And the purpose of this epigram is to describe or demonstrate the seriousness of the situation in a memorable way. And by expressing an idea in a just a few remarkable words, a writer can use epigrams to catch a reader's attention, conveys a complex idea concisely or create an opportunity for humor. Next, ambiguity. An ambiguity occurs when something is open to more than one interpretation. Ambiguity is possible in literature, ideas, statements, arts, music, and maths. At times, ambiguity is reliant on context. Something can be ambiguous in one situation while unambiguous in another. For example, consider the short phrase, I read the book. This sentence alone could refer to the present or the past as the word read in English is spelled the same way in the present and the past tenses. However, if you change the sentence to, I read the book when I was seven, that clears up the ambiguity and places that uh, the context in the past tense. At first glance, it may seem that ambiguity and vagueness are nearly homonymic as the definition of ambiguity allows for more than one potential conclusion. However, the possible interpretations of an ambiguous situation or phrase are limited and stem logically from the information presented. Vagueness, on the other hand, refers to a situation in a which no interpretation can be successfully drawn because the information given is not clear enough. Uh, some common examples of ambiguity are we experience ambiguity on a daily basis and uh, whether it, whether in ordinary language or conversation or while watching politicians or comedians uh, here uh, are some uh, simple sentences that have more than one possible interpretation The bark was painful could mean a tree's bark or was, uh, could mean a tree's bark was rough or a dog's bark communicated uh, pain or hurt the listener's ears. Harry uh, is not coming to the party. Tells Joe that we will see him next week. The hymn could refer either to Harry or to Joe. Next, let's see about tragic flaw. A tragic flaw is a literary term that refers to a personality trait of a main character that leads to his or her downfall. In other words, a character which with a tragic flaw is in need of some kind of attitude adjustment. The term usually comes up when we are studying a tragedy. That is a piece of literature in which the main character uh, ends up dead or otherwise defeated. In this kind of story, the main character is sometimes also called the tragic hero. As Aristotle argued, tragic flaws gives characters a relatability. Relatability. These flaws allow writers to develop characters on various levels. 
create complexity in the story, lead characters toward the path of self-discovery, and cause readers to feel sympathy toward the characters. Readers may identify with the character on a more powerful level, allowing them to care about the character or even fear that they are on the same or destructive path. So in Antigone, Creon is another Greek hero with pride as his tragic flaw, coupled with his stubbornness. Throughout the play, he is unwilling to listen to anyone else and never admits that he is wrong. Yet he is superior to all because he is a king and even def uh, defeats the gods at one point. At the end of the play, Creon admits his hubris as his tragic flaw, stating, I alone am guilty. As a result, he does not die, but he suffers the tragic death of his wife, niece and sons due to his actions which drive all three to take their own lives. Like sometimes the tragic flaw is not in the protagonist, but in the antagonist. These stories are not tragedies, but they can still be an example of tragic flaws. For example, in the Harry Potter series, the antagonist Voldemort has a tragic flaw that leads to his demise. And next, let us discuss about Solilaki. Solilaki is a literary device most often found in dramas in which a character speaks to him or himself letting his or her innermost thoughts and feelings as if thinking aloud. If someone, in some cases, an actor might direct a soliloquy directly to the audience, such that rather than the audience overhearing the character's spoken thoughts, the character is actively sharing his or her thoughts with the audience. The term soliloquy comes from the Latin soliloquium, which means talking to oneself. Because soliloquies are allow the audience to know what a character is thinking or feeling. A soliloquy often creates dramatic irony as the audience is made aware of thoughts and events that the other characters in the play are not. And soliloquies were once very common in dramas. They appear frequently in Shakespeare. But as plays shifted toward realism, in the late 18th century, soliloquies become, become less frequent. So now it's a assessment time. Here I have posted some questions. You can find the answers. Thank you.